Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make a botanical green for tainting plants and leaves. I have this sketchbook spread, I'm not sure if you can see that very well, but I've just painted in a few of the green leaves so far. This is a, a sketchbook spread of wild tea that I'm working on. And I'm just going to show you how I mix some of the greens that I use often in my botanical painting. Sometimes people are confused if you should use a green out of the tube, if you should mix it with blue and yellow, if you should add something else to the green, and I'll let you know a few of my tips coming up. So today I'm going to show you how to mix a really great green for painting any kind of plant or botanical item. This is just a sketchbook spread I've done um, with a whole bunch of ingredients you can find out in nature to make wild tea. I've got wild roses, pineapple weed, which is a type of chamomile, red clover, fireweed, and water mint. And so these are things in nature where I live that I can find and they're edible and they make a really great tea for when you're camping or just out on a hike. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and mix a green that would work fairly well for these leaves. So I have my main palette here and as you can see I still have some green left over from another painting. Um, I'm just going to add to that and what I'm using here is a Winsor & Newton permanent sap green. I'm just going to start a puddle of that. And permanent sap green is a great base color for botanical greens. I don't often just use a green out of the tube. I like to add something to it um, or use yellow and blue to make my green as well. So I'm going to add some French ultramarine and again that's Winsor & Newton to this blue puddle here and you get kind of a deeper darker foresty blue. It's a little cat hair. Get that out of the way. And then I'm also going to mix more sap green to the side of that. And then I'm going to take this Windsor lemon over here in the corner and add that to get a light, bright, fresh green. And usually when I'm painting leaves, I use at least two to three tones of green for one leaf as it makes it look more realistic and adds more depth and interest to the painting. I'm going to mix one more green and what I'm going to do is take the same sap green again and this time I'm going to add a little bit of this Windsor red and this is going to make a muted green color as red and green are complementary colors so you can see it, it's almost more of like a khaki green there. If I added more and more red, it would go darker and darker and muddier until I had some kind of brown. But I'm good with this right here for a nice mixture of greens to use on my leaves. So now I have my sketchbook spread ready. I've already drawn it all out and gone over it with waterproof ink. And now I'm going to go ahead and paint some of the leaves. I think I will start off with some of these fireweed leaves here. If you're interested in learning more about creating a sketchbook spread, finding things to draw out in nature, how to draw it, put it together, and painting it, I have a full online class um, called How to Start a Nature Sketchbook on my Skillshare channel, and you can check that out um, and take the entire the full class and um, see the projects that all the other students have posted um, if you're interested, and you can find that in the link below to this video and I'll link a special link to if you're interested to get two months free on Skillshare. Okay so I'm first going to take probably my medium sized round brush and I'm going to wash over the leaf with a bit of wet water first 
And then I'll take my lightest green, bring it in closer here, and I'm going to drop in that beautiful green just at the beginning. Then I'm going to grab the darker green. And drag that to the tip. And as you can see, the colors are mixing together nicely. Then I'm just going to rinse my brush and just dry it off a bit so it's damp. And then I'm going to drag the lighter color through the darker color and also just tidy up the edges. And then I'm just going to go ahead and through the middle, press down harder and just lift a bit of the color out there. And that's a great way to do a really simple leaf. Um, if you're not super confident or advanced with watercolor painting yet, this is a wonderful way to do it with some waterproof pen um, first to make the outline and the veins. And then just add in two colors mixing together in a wet on wet, on wet wash. If you want to know more about washes, I do have another class where you can learn all about the basics of watercolor washes and you can find that on my Skillshare, Skillshare link as well down below. I'm just going to paint a few more of these here now. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you're interested in, again, as I said, learning about creating a nature sketchbook spread or just about basic watercolor washes, I do have two Skillshare classes, full length online classes covering those topics. And you can get two months free on Skillshare and access to all of those plus more classes from other teachers with the link in my description down below. Thanks. Mm -hmm.